guys, I have the most exciting news ever. I'm going to hike the Pacific Crest Trail this year. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's actually happening. I've got all my books here <laughs> that I've been referencing and I've been starting to plan and I can't wait to bring you along on the journey. It's going to be amazing. I can't believe it. I am beyond excited. It's been on my list to do for so long. I think it was the first long distance trail I've actually ever heard of. And as soon as I heard of it, I'd only done very short backpacking trips at that point. I was like, I need to do that one day. Like it just felt like viscerally, like I have to do that at some point in my life. And the first ever through hike I was going to do was going to be the Pacific Crest Trail, but that was in 2020. So I decided to do the Great Divide Trail instead because then I could stay in Canada and hike that. And I'm so glad I did because I love, 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 love that trail. And it was a great way to start, to start hiking in Canada where I'm from and like lots of things were still familiar to me, which was great. But this year I've decided I'm gonna do it. I'm going to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. As many of you know, if you've been watching my videos, I was, I've fallen in love with long distance hiking. So I did the Great Divide Trail, which was a 950 kilometer hike back in 2020. I didn't do a long distance hike in 2021 because I was building out this van with my husband. So that was taking up all of our time, all of our spare time. And then in 2022, I hiked the Croatian long distance trail, which was a 2200 kilometer hike. And the Pacific, the Pacific Crest Trail, so this will be my 2023 hike, is 2600 miles. So I can't remember exactly how many K that is, but it's definitely my longest hike ever. And that feels very daunting to me. I've never done that long of a hike. And my plan is to actually hike it southbound. So I want to start at the Canada-US border and then hike all the way to the US-Mexico border. But that's my plan. So because I'm starting southbound, I start later. So there's lots of northbound hikers already hiking the trail. But I'll be starting later. And just for my own personal safety, I won't be telling you online my exact start date and my exact like plan in terms of pace um, but I will say that I'm starting in July so I'll give you that general month because um, most southbounders I think do start in July and then I'll be hiking south towards the border and I don't know exactly how fast I will be I know when I was finishing up the Croatian long distance trail if you haven't watched those videos yet I'll put them up here I was hiking 40 kilometers per day so I think that's around 30 miles per day or something. I'll do the calculation. So I know I can hike a decent amount, but when I was doing that, I was hiking from the van to the van. My husband, Brian, he was driving this van between my start and my end point each day. So I had a day pack. So I'm going to have a heavier pack. I'll be tenting. Um, some things will be slower and harder, but some things will be faster and easier. Like for example, wayfinding. So the Croatian long distance trail, um, is still so new that there were lots of times where nothing was marked. I was bushwhacking or it wasn't really a trail. So I was having to wayfind a lot. Whereas the Pacific Crest Trail, it's my understanding at least that um, it's a pretty well, I mean, it's a well-established trail at this point and there are a lot of trail markers. And so the people I've talked to who have done it had said they're not doing as much wayfinding. So I think, yeah, Based on that, I'll probably be able to do a pretty decent pace, but I'm not as in shape as I would like to be right now. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's my plan for my long distance hike. I'm going to do the Pacific Crest Trail. Oh! I have to backtrack a little bit. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that my husband is currently going through treatment for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. If you want to see the video where we shared what we were going through. I'll put it up here for you. So we left the van here and we went back to Canada and we got an apartment and got him into regular treatment. And my plan previously had been to do two long distance hikes over here. So one in Turkey and then one in Georgia, the country. And 
I had planned it all out. I'd reached out to people. Like I already mentally had planned for those to be my long distance hikes this year. And then our plans changed because that's life. <laughs> you just can't predict these things. Um, and so we were back in Victoria on Vancouver Island and Brian and I were doing some hikes together. We did the Juan de Fuca Trail, the West Coast Trail, and he was starting to really feel like, okay, I'm set up now. I've got way more support um, and he's noticing improvements. But what I was noticing was I was feeling really lost in terms of like, okay, well, what am I going to do this year? Like we were, we sort of planned a year. Okay, we'll be here for a year. You can get more treatment. And then I was looking ahead at my year thinking like, how do I also stay true to who I am and do something this year that makes me me? Because what I noticed is I lost myself a lot in the caretaking that I was doing for him. I really just sort of let myself get sort of consumed by that. And that wasn't healthy for me, it wasn't healthy for Brian. And we realized like this pattern is not good. And so throughout this whole process, I was like, I know that the thing that has always consistently always made me feel the most truest version of myself is long distance hiking. I am myself when I'm doing it. And what's so interesting is I'm also myself when I'm planning for it, when I'm looking ahead to it. And then when I'm editing my videos or writing blog posts about it, like the entire process I feel like me. So I was like, okay, I have to make a plan for myself to be myself and to be healthy. And of course, when we got back, it was well past when permits went live. So permits were sold out to all the long distance hikes near me, near Vancouver Island, Canada. So I was like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> How do I get a permit? And through my internet research, I found out that people do cancel their Pacific Crest Trail permits because again, life happens, like injuries happen, family members get sick, whatever might happen. And it doesn't end up working out for you to do the hike that year. So what I did is I checked every single day I would go, I would refresh the permit availability page on the PCTA website and look for a date that would work for me. And one day I refreshed it and there were four availabilities in July and I squealed. I think Brian was in the shower. He's like, what, what? And I'm like, okay, I need your help. We're doing this. And I selected the date that I thought was going to work best based on like my life schedule. And there we go. I applied for it and then it takes a little while for them to review your application and then tell you if you've been approved and like your date is now um, reserved and then I'll actually get the full permit issued to me I think a few weeks before my start date. So that's the process as to like how we decided this was the right thing for me but also for Brian's health because I don't want to do anything to like set his health back either. That's super important to me and talking about this hike honestly just wouldn't feel authentic if I wasn't also talking about the fact that I am completely considering the fact that um, I don't want to do anything to hinder or affect my husband Brian's PTSD recovery. Um, so yeah, we've had tons of talks about that and we're both feeling really, really good about it. And I'm hoping he can maybe join me for short sections at times if he's feeling up for it. But also, I am completely leaving the possibility open to, like, if it's not working for us, for me to be away, then I'll just come home. And that's okay. There are so many reasons why through hike might not work out. And um, just not putting that pressure on myself to absolutely, like, stick it out if it's not feeling right for me or Brian or our marriage. So yeah, that's more the like emotional side of what's going on with me. And then let's talk about more like the physical and the gear side. So you may have noticed I've been starting to try to get lighter gear. So I did get a Durston Kakwa 
60, I think, 60 liter pack. And I used that on my coastal hikes that I did and I loved it. It's so lightweight, but it also really carries stuff well. So it feels sturdy, but it's really lightweight. So I love that pack. And I also got my first ever one person tent. So I ordered the XMID One Pro from um, Durston Gear as well. And I've not used it yet, but I'm really excited to try it. And a couple other little things, but mostly I have all the gear I wanna bring. And I'm gonna do a whole video on all the gear I'm bringing. So stay tuned for that. And then I've also been starting to prepare my food. So I dehydrated a bunch of dinners before I left. And then Brian's been doing a little bit while I'm away, which is really nice. And then I'll do a bunch more when I get back from the van. So I've been preparing for that. And I think I'm mostly just going to dehydrate my own dinners and then probably resupply my snacks as I go. And then the other thing I've started doing is planning my food resupply is the first thing I've planned. And I think I'd like to do a video on diving a little bit more into depth on how I'm planning and then maybe even doing a recap at the end, like what I didn't need to plan or something. Like I'm hoping to be able to share that insight with you. Um, but yeah, basically I've just been planning, okay, where am I going to resupply? What's the address? Checking all the rules because each spot seems a little bit different. And I've been heavily relying on these books. So I've gotten through Washington and Oregon so far. And these books are great because like they outline a ton about the trail, but at the back, let's see if I can show you. They outline a bit more details about services and things. So like here they've got package slash cash mailing address. So you could like mail your resupply to that address. So I've been looking there. Then I've been checking my far out app on my phone, which has a bunch of people's like recent comments. And also I've been checking their websites or emailing them just to make sure I have all the up-to-date information because books basically, we know books are going to go out of date eventually because things change. So um, I've been planning that. And then the last thing I've been working on is my fitness. So I would say throughout like the fact that Brian and I have been going through so much with his mental health and then subsequently my mental health and just a lot of stress and stuff, I have not been as active as I usually like to be, um, which is kind of ironic because when you're under a lot of stress, it's helpful <laughs> to be active. But also a side note, it is so, I'm sorry, like I'm sweating. It's so hot. Ever since I've been to Bulgaria, it's like really muggy every single day. And then there's a thunderstorm at night. I would say that's happened every single night except for one. So it's like, oh, sorry. I tried to wait until it stopped being muggy to film, but I don't know. It seems like every day that's just the state status. Um, oh shoot, I lost track of what I was saying. Okay, so I'm not in the best physical shape. So what I've been doing is I've been working on exercises where I know I'm weak. So I've been working on single leg squats, single leg calf raises and lowers, um, things like that, that um, I noticed weaknesses pop up on my coastal hikes I did uh, several weeks. I guess it was like a few weeks ago now, the Juan Fuca Trail and the West Coast Trail. Everything else in my body felt good, but I noticed my knee bothered me a little bit on the Juan Fuca Trail and then my Achilles tendon bothered me a little bit on the West Coast Trail. So I've been working on exercises I know that are helpful for that. And I'm fortunate in the sense that I know those types of exercises because I do have a degree in physiotherapy. But I've also been working with my physiotherapist who's been helping guide me a little bit too. Um, and I really wanted to do a bunch of hiking while I was here, but the weather has not been conducive to that. So I haven't actually been doing much hiking. So I'm hoping when I get back from this trip to the van that I will be able to get some hiking in leading up to my start date in July. And so that then ties me into why the heck I'm back here in my van at all. 
So last video you would have seen um, was either my hike or one of my training videos I put together for you. Um, so now I'm back in the van. So I was back in Canada during that video. Now I'm here. So I've been here. I've been mostly hanging out in the van, driving, going to nice campgrounds. Like this campground I'm at right now is actually one of the most stunning ones I've been to. It might even be my favorite one, actually. Beautiful views, beautiful pool. It's really nice. And yeah, I've been planning my hike working on my videos, doing exercises, mostly in the van because it's been so stormy. And I've been driving to places where I can hike and then there's thunderstorms, so I'm not hiking, but that's okay. And then what I'm planning to do is bring the van to Greece to be able to store it for another six months while we figure out what we're gonna do. So yeah, that's my update. Um, I'm going to be doing more videos leading up to Pacific Crest Trail, so I want to definitely show you all my gear, um, dive a bit deeper into how I'm planning, because I've started planning the resupply, but next I'm going to start doing planning my pace and stuff and how I'm going to make sure I stay on track to finish in time and all of that. I also will be doing a lot more food prep and like packing my resupply boxes. And I have a feeling you guys might be interested in that. So let me know as well if you're interested in seeing me do the re do like a little bit more about the food and the resupply strategy. If you want me to do any other videos leading up to the start of my hike, let me know. Like if there's anything you're curious about. Okay, I can't think of anything else. I think I covered everything. I just really wanted you to know where I was at, what I was planning, what you can look forward to in terms of the content I want to share with you, the story I want to tell about this whole journey. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking out this video so long. I kind of, I chatted a lot, but <laughs> I'm obviously really excited as you can probably tell. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you want to go back and watch any of those other videos I mentioned, you can do so now. Um, and if you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, that would be awesome. Click that subscribe button and you can even turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. And yeah, write in the comments what you want to see, what types of videos you want me to do, or what, uh, what you would like to hear from me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Leave me a comment. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye. Oh my goodness. Hello, hello. It's so hot. I got thirsty talking that much. Beyond we stand Ooh, on the wait. opposite shore. Hello, no, no. I reach through mysterious ceilings. My only hope. I look for the things I've